Hey there everybody! Today we're going to be talking about how to engrave with your Cricut Maker Machine. So there's a lot of um, questions floating out there about how to center your items on smaller things like dog tags and bracelets, um, how to even create these in general. I also want to teach you a really cool trick on how to add more detail to your engraving so that it stands out more. Um, when you actually engrave it with your Cricut machine. Instead of it just being a faint engraved outline, I'm going to teach you how to add what is called a hatch fill pattern to any design um, inside of design space. So um, we're gonna start first. Um, I'm gonna show you first the hatch fill trick. And then after that, I'm going to show you how to get everything aligned properly and centered um, for when you actually go to your cut screen how to make sure things are centered on your metal blanks like bracelets and dog tags and maybe acrylic keychain blanks and things like that. So we're gonna go over the hatch fill first, so let's start with that. You can see a couple examples here on my screen of what it looks like to have a hatch fill added. This is just the hatch fill by itself here. Um, this is a dot hatch fill pattern that I've put into this. Here on the bracelet um, template, I have a uh, bloom where you are planted. There is links to these templates and to these hatch fill patterns below this video, so make sure you grab them. They will be very, very helpful to you. They will save you a lot of headache trying to set up some of these basic templates by yourself. So um, like I said, let's, sh let's go over the hatch fill first. Right now I have a circle here that I have drawn using my shapes tool and I scale it to 1.5 inches wide. Um, for example, there are some um, acrylic blanks on Amazon that I have purchased that are 1.5 inches wide and they're circles and I would engrave on those and use them as a keychain. Um, below this video, there's also a link to all of my resources on where I find these blanks if you're wondering where to get them. This here is a monogram I have created and uploaded. It's just um, a simple monogram um, circle here, my daughter's name, um, her initials, and I'm going to put the hatch fill pattern right inside of there. So I'm gonna go over to my upload button and I've already uploaded my hatch fill patterns. If you have not uploaded yours yet, then of course just hit the upload button and select the hatch fill SVG that you wish to use and bring that into design space. I'm going to click on the dot hatch fill pattern and I'm going to insert that into my canvas. Okay, and it loaded kind of big, so we're just going to zoom out and shrink it and get it more correctly scaled here. All right, now one thing I want to say about the hatch fill patterns. There are a little bit of limitations inside of Design Space. Um, it's, it's a great software, but it's not designed to be a um, high-end graphic software. So it may not always um, cut the hatch fill patterns as seamlessly as we would like. So I've provided a dot hatch fill pattern and I've also provided a stripe hatch fill pattern. And the reason for this is more than just having the option of both, there are gonna be times when certain images or certain graphics are going to work better with the dot pattern, and there's going to be ones that may also work better with the stripe pattern. For example, um, I tried to put this one with a stripe pattern, and it did not work at all. Now when I put the dot pattern with it, it worked just fine. And then here, with the bracelet bloom where you are planted, the dot pattern did not work well with that one, so I used the stripe hatch fill pattern. So I just want you to know that if one hatch fill pattern is not agreeing with what you're working with, try the other one and it may work just fine. Um, so that's just a little side note there for you. Okay, so before I actually go and click the slice tool for this, I'm going to duplicate this real quick. So just hit that duplicate button and just set it to the side. Now go ahead and select the dot hatch fill pattern and the monogram and click your slice tool. It might take about five to 10 seconds to slice. Um, there's a lot of little patterns going on there, so it takes a couple seconds. And there we go. And once you've done that, you might notice it looks kind of funky. Um, that's okay, just start pulling it apart, all right? So that piece doesn't look good. I'm just gonna get rid of that right away. And I'm gonna get rid of this background. I don't need that. And these look pretty similar. Um, I think, I think that one looks 
the best in my opinion. So pick whichever one looks the cleanest to you. This one, in my opinion, was the cleanest. And then I want you to make sure you change your line type. So in order to engrave, we have to tell Cricut which um, type of line we want it to cut and we want it to cut an engraving line. So make sure you select this and go up to your line type in your top edit bar, click the drop down menu and then change it to engrave. I want you to do the same thing with the copy that you made over here. Drop down menu and click engrave. Then I want you to pull this over and I want you to place it right on top. And one way you can make sure you get it accurate is to go uh, select both of them and go up to your align tool and then just click center and it will make sure that it centers it nice and um, perfectly for you there. So now you can see that we've created this nice detailed pattern here and then we've also left a nice edging to sort of unify that pattern. This one over here um, does not have the edging to it. If you prefer more of a rustic look to it, then you may want to leave the edging off. I like a cleaner look, so I added that extra layer with edging. Now you need to make sure you attach these together. So select both of them and just use your attach tool in the bottom of the layers panel. And then I'm just going to shrink this down. I'm going to pull this over here. Let me zoom in a little bit for you. I'm actually gonna unlock this and I'm gonna stretch it just a little bit so it matches the kind of outline of the circle a little bit better there. And I'm going to select the circle and my monogram and I'm gonna use that align tool again and click center so everything is nice and centered there. And then the next thing you need to do is that circle that's behind there that we made. Uh, we made that from the shapes panel right over here. You can grab a circle anytime. And that shapes tool that we use to make that, we need to change that line type as well. But I don't want you to change it to engrave. I want you to change it to draw. So you're going to change it to draw and it's basically just going to make an outline here um, of the circle behind it. Now, the reason that you're going to change it to draw, and I'm going to show you this when I actually show you how I load my machine, is you do not load the pen when you are doing this part. Cricut's going to prompt you, load your engraving tool and load your pen. Just don't load the pen. It will still make the motion of drawing this circle, but it will not actually draw anything because there will be no pen there. And this is still giving you the ability to guide you where you need to place this, um, which is going to be our next part that we're going to get to here on how to actually center everything. So I wanted to go over that hatch fill trick for you because there's some people who are like, you know, I want to make it look a little more bold, make the engraving stand out a little bit more. So that is how you do that. You can also do it if you want to use an enamel pen and I have resource links for that below this video as well. Um, so be sure to check out all of that so you can make sure you get all of the information because there's a lot of other information that I can't pack into this um, video right here. Um, so next part, how do we center something? That's the big, big question, especially when you're working with more harder shapes like the dog tag. Um, Lucky for you, I have created these templates and I've done a lot of that hard work for you. So using these templates here for the bracelet and for the dog tag, it's gonna save you a lot of headache already. But there's still a couple things you need to know to make sure that you're getting that right. So I'm going to just bring this over here and I'm gonna get rid of this stuff on the screen here so that we can focus on just that dog tag. Okay, so first things first, you can use this um, template, which I am linking below for you. It's already set up in Design Space for you, so you don't even have to upload it. Just um, use the Design Space link that I have below for you. You can change the size of your dog tag, of course, in the edit bar up here. So uh, make sure whichever dog tag you purchase, just look at the dimensions um, that they should give you in the description of what you purchase and make sure it matches um, accurately which tag you're using. The tag I purchased were from Amazon. There's links to that below um, and they measured 1.5 inches wide by one inch high. So that's how I set mine up to be. Let me detach this real quick here so I can walk you through everything. Um, so this here, when you upload the, um, or when you click on the link to go into design space, this line type will already be changed to draw for you. But for any reason, if it isn't, it should be, but if it isn't, just make sure that the dog tag itself, the outline is set to draw as the line type. Um, and then I want you to type out whatever text you want 
for your dog tag. So in my case, my dog's name is Shortcake. We call him Shorty um, for short. He's a corgi. So um, he has short legs and it's a fitting name. So I typed out Shorty here and I just picked um, a font that Cricut had in its system here. This one's, um, let's see, which one did I use here? Yeah, I used this Allegarian. I don't know if I'm saying that right, um, but that's the one I used here if you like it. That is in Cricut's um, font library there. And the next thing you want to do is make sure you change your text to engrave. You have to change the line type for that as well. It'll default as cut, but make sure you've changed it to engrave. And then I select both of those again and, of course, use your align tool. You'll want to hit that center to make sure that the text is centered in the middle of that bone outline. Then you want to select both of them and you want to use that attach tool that's in the layers panel. Now Cricut will know that those need to stay together. So the next part here is, OK, how do I place my dog tag on my mat in order to make sure that it stays where it needs to engrave. And um, I know most of you know this, but in case you don't, your canvas is an exact replica of your Cricut mat. So when you look at your Cricut mat, you will see um, these one inch margins along the top and the side. So you're going to use the guide here on the canvas and also the same guide on your mat when you're placing your dog tag down. I'm gonna go to my Make It screen here. And when we go to the make it screen, it's going to automatically jump it up to the top most corner there. Don't leave it there. Um, there is a lot of margin for error in this with how Cricut will cut things. But if you use the guides that are one inch in on both sides, top and bottom, there is not hardly any room for error. So I want you to move your dog tag so that it's touching the one inch margins on each side. So one inch down from the top, one inch in from the side. So just make sure it's sitting nice and um, aligned right there in that top one inch corner, one inch in and one inch down, okay? And then I want you to do the same thing with your dog tag on your mat. And I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that right now. Okay, so when you get to the part where you have to select your material, you may have to hit browse all materials to get things to be visible for you. And it's gonna bring up everything that Cricut says it is compatible to engrave with. Um, you can select some different things like leather, cardstock, craft boards. I've used a couple of these other ones if I'm working with paper. However, I have found after some trial and error that the tooling leather setting here, the 2.4 millimeter um, tooling leather is one of the more deeply engraved settings. And I prefer my items to be as deeply engraved as possible. So even though I'm engraving on metal here, I actually select the tooling leather setting and it works really well. So if you're selecting something else like, um, like this metal down here, 40 gauge thin copper, uh, it may not engrave as deeply as the tooling leather setting. So I highly recommend just going ahead and selecting the tooling leather setting um, because to me that one just works best. So that's what I would select and then you just click done. And it's of course gonna prompt you to load your mat. Don't load the black pen, just let it go through the motion. Make sure you've got your engraving tip in and then go ahead and proceed with the cut. Okay guys, so um, just like I showed you on the screen a minute ago, we need to make sure we place on the screen um, our little dog tag one inch in and one inch in from, from the top and one inch in from the side. You're gonna do exactly the same thing with the actual placement of the dog tag on the mat. So um, just so you know, I'm using a standard mat here. I do recommend the Strong Grip Purple Mat. I didn't have one on hand. If you don't have one on hand either, but you have a fresh, not yet used uh, Cricut green mat with painter's tape, that will work as well. Um, so I am going to place mine exactly like it is on the screen, which is one inch down from the top and one inch in from the side. So just get that placed exactly where it needs to be. And then you want to make sure you use a little painter's tape. Now, 
don't let the painter's tape go where the engraving is going to be. Put it on the little edges of the dog bone because there's going to be nothing that's going to get engraved there. So that's fine. And this is just going to ensure that it's not going to move. Even if you're using the strong grip mat, I still recommend doing this. It's just a little extra insurance to make sure things are not going to move around on you and you're not going to end up with a bad engraving. Okay, so I have my dog tag set exactly like it's showing on the screen, which will ensure that it's going to cut right where we want it to. So I'm just going to load this into my Cricut machine real quick. I have my engraving tool already in my Cricut machine. The engraving tool is number 41. There's little numbers on the side. Um, if you don't know how to change your quick swap housing, I have another video on that on my YouTube channel. So I'll link that below um, this video as well. Um, so you'll know exactly how to change this if you don't yet. So I'm just placing this into my machine and I'm going to start the cut. Now the Cricut is gonna go through the motion of actually um, drawing um, that outline that we placed. Um, but like I said, don't load the pen and it'll just go through the motion real quick and then it'll move on to the engraving and that way you don't have to worry about getting a black line on anything. Um, but that was just what we use as our template to make sure that it stays exactly where we need it to. So my machine is going to town now and it's engraving that dog tag. Okay, so it's all done now. I'm just gonna unload my mat as usual. Let me zoom in on this here for you. There we go. You might need to blow this off a little bit um, because it will have some like engraving dust on it. I'm just gonna take all this off. Okay, let me blow this off for a second. There we go. Get all that dust off there. And you can see this aside. You can see our dog tag has been engraved and it is pretty darn centered and looks really cute. And that template was super helpful to us and got us exactly where we needed that text to be. So um, that is exactly how you do it, guys. It's that easy. Uh, make sure you use those templates because they will make all the difference in the world. So real quick, I'm just gonna show you the bracelet setup. Uh, it's very similar to the dog tag. If you can do the dog tag, you can do the bracelet. Um, of course, these templates are also included below this video for the bracelets. Just make sure it's accurate to the width of whatever bracelet you purchased. Um, the links to the ones I purchased that match this template exactly are below this video as well. Again, the template itself here is gonna be set to the line type of draw. And then we wanna make sure the rest of these are changed to engrave. Um, so I'm just gonna move this down. I'm gonna select all of these. I'm going to change the line type to engrave. I'm gonna put this back, oops. And I'm gonna make sure it's center. So I'm just going to select both of those, use my align tool, do center and it will center on that template. Repeat the same thing with the skinny bracelet if you're doing one, engrave. Make sure the template is set to um, draw, and it will be because I already set it up that way for you. Make sure you attach your engraving and your template line together. And then um, here, we're going to do the same thing. So it's gonna be set up one inch down from the top and one inch in. You're gonna set it the same way up on your mat. And then if you wanna engrave more than one bracelet at once, you totally can do that. It's really easy. Just go to the next line down. So it's still gonna be one inch in from the left-hand side, but you're gonna go two inches down. So just use that two inch margin right there for the thinner bracelet. See how it's sitting right there on the two inch margin? And it's one inch in from the side. So just set it up just like that and then select both of those bracelets once you've done that and use your attach tool so that they stay relative to each other as they are now on the screen. Then when you go to the cut screen, just grab them again and move them right back one inch down from the top and one inch in. 
Okay, so that'll be perfectly set up for you just like that. And then just hit your continue and of course um, select your um, settings and go to cut. I also just wanna show you real quick guys for the bracelet one, you would do the same thing of course. You just set that one inch down, one inch in, and if you wanna engrave more than one at once, I have this thinner one here, and so I just set it down on the uh, two inch down mark, and then two inches, or one inch in, I'm sorry, one inch in, one inch in, and then you can just go line by line. Um, and of course, we need to add our painter's tape again. Again, I do recommend the Strong Grit Mat. I just didn't have it on hand when I decided to do this tutorial. Um, I have some coming to me, but they didn't arrive when I had already started filming, so I just went ahead and used a fresh green mat, which works pretty well for the first couple of times as long as you're using painter's tape. So if you wanna know how to do these bracelets, this is how I do it. Following those margins like we just talked about, I'm gonna cut these, and, or engrave these, excuse me, and then I'm going to um, show you how I curve them as well. So again, our Cricut is going to make the motion of drawing that outline as if there is a pen there. Just make sure you don't add the pen. And once it's done doing that, it's going to start engraving those two bracelets I have placed on there. you're all anxious to know how to actually get the bracelet um, piece into the shape that you want to wear it like this. I've created a couple other ones here. This one says uh, be creative and this one's a little arrow and this one says bloom where you're planted and then I have another version of the bloom where you're planted as well. Um, so basically this is actually a kit that you can buy on Amazon and I'm linking this below the video for you as well. Um, so you can buy these metal bracelets and then it comes with this nifty little piece here that allows you to bend the bracelet and I'm just going to show you how to use it. I'll start with this one here. You'll just place it right in that little notch that you see there that they've given you. Place it right in the center of that notch and use the leverage to gently curl your bracelet. So I start with one side like that, where I curl it, and then I flip it around and do the same thing on the other side. And then I usually stop there, and of course it's a little wide, so then I'll kind of go back and forth to make sure it keeps an even bend. and push it just a little bit further. Might do that on you a couple times. It's all right, it won't break, don't worry. It's metal, it's really tough, it can take it. And then you can sort of shape it a little bit with your hands too, just like you would if you're pressing um, a bracelet around your wrist. Take your time with this part because if you go too quickly, you might get a really ugly notch right up here. Um, so just take your time, once you sort of get it, a little bit tighter, go back to the bar, the shaping bar, and just shape it a little bit more. There we go. So now it's nice and shaped, and we got our engraving on there. Let me zoom in here for you. See our engraving there. And of course you would do the same thing with all of them. So you can do the same thing with the little one. The little one will bend a lot easier. So there we have that one. And then I also did this one that has the word warrior on it with the little semicolon. 
for those of you that don't know, a semicolon is a sign of mental health awareness. For those who struggled with depression, anxiety, suicidal thoughts, that kind of things. So as you can see, this is really basic and really easy to do, and you definitely want to make sure you buy this shaping bar. And the uh, kit is linked below this video for you. So just take a few minutes to go and grab that. They're not expensive at all, um, but they make all the difference in the world for shaping these. Trying to do these by hand is pretty much impossible. And as you can see, using our Cricut for our engraving and this metal shaping bar, we can make a whole bunch of really cool bracelets using our Cricut machine. Pretty awesome, right? And you can do this with some other jewelry too, like um, earrings or pendants that you put on necklaces. Um, so there's a lot of different things to be creative with there. Um, but I hope this tutorial was helpful for you guys, and I hope it showed you, um, you know, all that back-end work you needed in order to create um, these really cool engraving projects. So I can't wait to see what you guys make. Make sure you pop into my Facebook group and show me everything you're making. I can't wait to see. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.